Welcome to Decklist Assist. Here to help assist me is the common we all know and love, Tim. Thanks, Dee. Ladies and gentlemen, Papa Magic games have countless variables and almost infinite options to create with, so it can be quite daunting when you first start a new deck idea. Our Decklist Assist is here to provide a six-point checklist, allowing you to roughly determine how solid your deck will be within a given metagame. Six being the top deck score, whereas two may suggest you need to keep tweaking your brew. First on our checklist is Evasion. An Evasion ability is an ability an attacking creature has that restricts what can block it. Flying, Shadow, and Landwalk abilities are just a few examples of some of the many evasions Popper has to offer. Simply put, if your creatures lack evasion, your opponents have more options. And more options mean more ways to negate your strategy. Additionally, score spells like Apostle's Blessing as having evasion since they grant it for a turn. But keep in mind, if you're only running one spell in your 60 that fits our example, it may be more accurate to score our Apostle's Blessing example at a .5 or lower. Judge accordingly. Graveyard. This is a broad category and can simply mean including a few cards with flashback, all the way to basing your entire deck around a graveyard engine like Tortured Existence style decks. Your graveyard should be doing something to promote the game state. If your graveyard just sits there and collects discarded efforts of battle, you should have a great reason why. A lone copy of Grim Harvest or one of the many amazing retrace cards can go a long way in making your deck design shine and pull off games it would otherwise be losing. Draw. It's no surprise that blue shines at this, so we're going to ignore its vast catalog of draw within Popper. I should know. Instead, let's look closely at the other colored options and try to include some draw wherever possible. It can be something as simple as playing cards that cycle. Look to sneak blue into builds that don't have it. In other words, find ways to draw cards outside of blue. Here are just a few non-blue gems. If they're not in your deck list, have a clear reason why they're not. Knight's Whisper. Faithless Looting, Croson Tusca, Abundant Growth, Manamorphous. White is the hottest color to bend this rule and it can be rough, but using Runes of Protections instead of Circles of Protection will allow you to pick and choose when and if you play the enchantment or draw a card with cycling. However, this should be done only in white heavy mana builds. Additionally, Spell Bombs, Chromatic Spheres and Stars, as well as the king we all play and use, Gitaxian Probe, are all great ways to incorporate draw outside of blue base cards. Removal. Removal often means the difference between winning and losing. Remember, every metagame is different and requires a good estimation of how much removal you'll need. You should aim for flexible removal in your starting 60 wherever possible. In other words, removal that does something even if you have no targets. For instance, Acacian Javelineers, Piracy Charm, Capsize, Stinkweed Imp, Heaven Cause Justice, Crypt Rats, Fume Spitter, any direct damage spell that can target creatures and players, Shinin of Life's Roar, Quicksand, Prismatic Strands, Hydroblast, Pyroblast, Tendrils of Corruption, Rancid Earth, Martyr of Ashes, Gutshot, and Baird and Longbow are just a few examples of the many flexible options available when choosing your main deck removal options. Life Gain. To date, there is no counter for life gain in Popper. Some strategies like Tokens and Gone take this to the extreme, gaining so much life that many tier 1 decks like Delver simply can't do enough damage to matter. Think about it. Most decks are designed to deal 20 damage as fast as possible. By including life gain in your deck, you're fundamentally changing the life equation to favor your game plan. White and green excel at this, so we're not going to list many of those gems. However, here's a quick list of cards you can consider for gaining life. Silvok Lifestaff, Tendrils of Corruption, Brindleboard, Nod to the Bone, Pulse of Marasa, Siphon Life, Crypt Incursion, Corrupt, Radiant Fountain, Armadillo Cloak, Creatures with Lifelink like Volt Scourge, and the dual lands that grant one life. Bottle Gnomes and the sneaky Children of Corliss are just a sample of options in the vast pool of Popper. Mass Sweeper. Often spot removal isn't enough to get the job done. I should know. Somewhere in your 75, you should have the ability to take out multiple threats in one card. This is our least important category, but if you can attain it, all the better. Here are some top choices to consider so you don't get trampled by the weenie masses. Fade Away. Heaven Cause Justice. Shrivel. Whale of the Nim. Crypt Rat. Martyr of Ashes, Electricery, Park Pan Shaman, Bloodfire Dwarf, Sandstorm, and even Prismatic Strands if you have enough blockers of a different color than your opponent. So there you have it, a simple six point system to provide you with a proper checklist. If your brew scores a five or six, chances are it's going to be solid. Keep in mind that there are plenty of tier one decks that bend or even break the above advice. That being said, this should provide a solid roadmap on your quest to become a better player and deck designer. Thanks Tim, and remember, Players often focus only on the deck and not the sideboard. 
Play your entire 75 and plan accordingly, because two-thirds of magic are your sideboarded games.